So we want to talk about VSDs or ventricular septal defects, huh? Well, it's time to break out Harry the Heart while Biscotti rocks us into it. Now, before we can talk about what a ventricular septal defect is, we first need to talk about the different chambers of the heart. So let's go to the diagram. So there are four total chambers to the mammalian heart. The top two chambers individually are called atrium, and the bottom two chambers are called ventricles. Now, this thin little piece of tissue between the left and the right ventricle is called a septum, and you can think of this essentially as a wall between two different rooms. Clearly, that would mean that when we're talking about a ventricular septal defect, what we're talking about is a defect or a problem with the wall between the two ventricles. And essentially, that defect is a hole that goes straight through both sides of the wall. The reason this is problematic, if you couldn't already guess, is because when there's a hole in the wall separating two different chambers, blood can go from one chamber to the other in the wrong direction. The way blood normally flows through the heart is it comes from the body and goes into the right side of the heart. The right side of the heart then sends it to the lungs so it can get oxygenated. The lungs deliver it back to the left side of the heart who then sends it out to the rest of the body. So as you can see, blood never goes from one ventricle to the other. And depending on the size and type of hole, blood can either go from the left left ventricle to the right, which is significantly more common, or from the right to the left. The reason blood going from the right ventricle to the left ventricle is a problem is because the right ventricle has blood that doesn't have any oxygen to it. And if that blood bypasses the lungs and goes right into the left ventricle, that means our heart's pumping up blood that doesn't have oxygen, which is kind of needed for our body to function. The reason it's problematic if blood goes from the left to the right ventricle is because instead of the blood going out to the body, it goes back into the heart, increasing the amount of blood the heart has to hold. And the heart can only hold so much blood before bad things start to happen. Think of it like a water balloon. If you overfill a water balloon, eventually it's going to pop. The same thing happens to the heart, except instead of popping, for the most part, the heart just decompensates until the pet eventually goes into failure. And for the sake of completion, here are the four different types of ventricular septal defects. Typically, there are no clinical signs of a ventricular septal defect unless the patient is starting to decompensate or go into congestive heart failure. While we typically start diagnosing a ventricular septal defect by hearing a murmur on exam, the way we actually diagnose it is with an echocardiogram or an ultrasound of the heart. When it comes to treating these things, some patients don't require any treatment at all. Now, if the hole's big enough and problematic, we treat it basically by just plugging up the hole. And there's a couple different surgical procedures that we can do in order to achieve this. 